welcome to the seventh episode, first episode of season two of GenTech. I'm super excited about this season because I've got a lot of cool tools for you guys to check out and use to help share, collaborate, and organize your family history research. So for this first episode, we're going to be talking about Timeline JS, which is a really great tool for um, creating timelines that can really help you delve deep into the events in your family history. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a pretty quick presentation, but it's a similar format as before. So I'll go through what Timeline JS is, why you'd want to use it, and I'll go through a demo and show you how to use it. So Timeline JS was created by the Northwestern University Night Lab. It's a tool that basically allows you to create an informative, interactive timeline in a really quick and easy way. So it's great for narrative-based information. You can actually embed the timeline on your website. So um, you create it through their website and then you can put it on your own website, regardless if it's a WordPress website or some other kind of website. And you can pull in photos, videos, maps, and so much more different types of media. And what's probably important to you guys is there's no coding whatsoever necessary to use this tool. So why would you want to use it? Um, you can use it to straighten out your family's story. So timelines are a really good way to find the gaps in your research. And by making a timeline with Timeline JS, it just creates a more interactive, uh, presentable timeline to showcase that history. As I mentioned, you can visualize your research gaps. You can share your family events in a whole new way by incorporating all these different types of media. If you want to include videos, if you want to include photos, um, all kinds of documents and things like that, you totally can. And you can even place family events in a historical context. So even going beyond the family events in your family history, you could talk about things that were going on in their time period and in their communities. So here's an example, it's just a screenshot for now, but it shows you an example of what a timeline with Timeline JS looks like. So where can you use it? Like I said, you can use it on pretty much any websites. Uh, for WordPress websites, they actually have a plugin that you can use. So if you have a self-hosted WordPress website, meaning a website that is created with WordPress.org instead of WordPress.com, you can use that plugin. You can also use their embed code for your timeline to embed it onto your own website in different locations. And you can also share the link to your timeline via social media, via email, and so much more. So when you create this timeline, it gets created on the Night Labs website, um, and you can link directly to your timeline from there. So what's the catch? Um, since the tool is free, it is always really good to ask yourself, what is the catch with this tool? What are some of the limitations I might be running into? Well, the tool is free to use. Uh, only a couple of limitations. So you do need a Google Drive account to use it. Uh, what the tool does is it pulls in a spreadsheet from Google Drive and uses that to, to essentially take that information and put it onto a timeline. Or you can pull in the data using JSON and and or JavaScript. So if you know how to code, Timeline.js is also a JavaScript library. So you could programmatically create the timeline to look exactly the way you want. And you can pull in the data programmatically as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So the website for Timeline.js is timeline.nightlab.com. You can also go to Google and just search Timeline.js and find it that way. On the home page, you'll find an example of a timeline here. And so as you can see, it's very interactive. You have a title screen, you have your timeline at the bottom, and you can use these arrows to progress through the timeline. And as you can see at the bottom, it indicates where you are in that time period. So here's an image being embedded. You have links that you could go to, all kinds of different things. Here's a map here. They explain what the tool is. So it's an open source tool that lets pretty much anyone create a timeline, whether you can code or whether you cannot code. Um, and they also give you some tips and tricks, as well as a video to show you how to use it. And then here are just some of the media sources that you can use. So you can pull in even tweets from Twitter, uh, Google Maps, 
um, YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, all kinds of different things. Real quick, I'll show you uh, that timeline that I had a screenshot of in my PowerPoint. So this is a timeline of Whitney Houston's life. And so it just kind of starts off with giving you some information um, about what this timeline is about. As you go through, as you can see, there's more media you can incorporate. And then you can also embed video. So here's a video of Whitney Houston's first recording. And you can also navigate the timeline by going to this bottom timeline here. And as you can see, this is all for the same year. So you can have multiple, multiple events per year. And you can even play those videos um, right directly on the website. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to actually create one of these cool timelines. If you go to their website, all you gotta do is just go to this make a timeline button and they go through step by step what you have to do. So they have this Google spreadsheet template that you can use and this allows you to format your data in a way that Timeline.js can understand so it can produce that timeline for you. So to use their template, just click get the spreadsheet template. If you have a Google Drive account, um, it will automatically uh, put you in Google Drive so you'll have to log into your account. So you'll click make a copy. If you don't have an account, it probably will just prompt you to, to go ahead and create an account. All right, so creating a copy. And as you can see here, uh, these different columns indicate what data fields you need to put down below. So for example, these first four columns indicate time period. So the year, the month, the day, and then also the time that the event happened. And then you also have the option to include the end year, end month, end day, end time. So if it's something, if it's an event that's lasted for a long period of time, you can include that information as well. You also can include a headline. So that'll be that text at the top um, of that event. Then you also have text. So that would be like the paragraph under that headline. And then if you have media that you want to incorporate, like a photo, you would include the link to that there. So if the photos you're using um, are hosted elsewhere, you would want to gather the link from that source and paste it into that cell right here. You can also include media credits. So if you don't own the image or the media, uh, definitely make sure to credit who does own that. And if you own it, of course, you want to put your name there so you can give yourself credit. You can also include a media caption. And so this could also be a way to just further explain what the media is about or to just further emphasize uh, who's credited on that media. There are a bunch of other different columns here um, which you can kind of explore and just play around with to see if it'll work for your needs. So I'm currently in Google Drive right now. In order to actually use this for my own needs, of course, I would want to put in my own data like they've done here with their examples. Um, and then after that, I would want to go to File, Publish to Web, and then make sure to click Entire Document and click OD1. And what that is, is it's corresponding to this tab at the bottom of the spreadsheet here. So what it's telling Google Spreadsheets is publish this spreadsheet, but not the entire spreadsheet, this, just this tab, and make it available for anyone to see on the web. So when I do that, I can click publish. It's gonna ask me, am I sure that I wanna do that? I'll click okay. And then I can close out here. Then I wanna click and copy this URL to the spreadsheet. Go back to the Timeline.js website and then paste the spreadsheet URL here. Now, the reason that we made it a publicly available spreadsheet is so that Timeline.js can access the information within that spreadsheet and create your timeline. Once I do that, there are a bunch of different uh, settings that I can choose. So if I wanna change the width or the height of, this, of the timeline, I can do that. And they also have a bunch of optional settings you could set. So you could change the font, you could choose 
um, what the default slide is, any number of those things. And then when you're done with everything, they give you links to share your timeline with other people. So this would be a direct link that you could send to others so that they could access your timeline. And this would be the embed code that you would want to put on your website. So if I go to the direct link here, I'm going to open a different tab in my web browser and just paste it. And then it just shows me the example um, timeline using that example data from their template. So I didn't make any changes to it. This is just the example that they automatically provided. And so everything is already set up. They've included some media just to show you as an example. And then you have your dates at the bottom in the timeline here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly what this can mean for family history. I've started a timeline for myself. So let me go ahead and go to my family spreadsheet. All right, so this is the spreadsheet um, that I've created using their template for my own family history. This is focusing on family events that have occurred to um, my great, great grandfather in South Carolina. So I first start with his birth and the month I think he was born in. And I just start including some facts about these different events that have happened to him. So I include uh, his birth, because that's the event that it actually is. I include some text talking about where he was born and the fact that I don't know who his parents were right now. I also have some media. And this is linked from my Franklin Memories website. So this is my family history website that contains um, some photos relating to that history. I also give a credit to uh, what the document or the image is. So this is from the 1900 federal census of Oconee County, South Carolina. And then I'm not really using any of these other columns, just kind of leaving them blank for now. As I go down, I'm just including additional events that have happened in his life. So the birth of his second wife, the birth of his first child, the birth of some other children, the marriage of him and his wife, also including residences and talking about where he was living, um, the fact that he was on a rented farm, that he can speak, uh, write and read English. And I've even included a YouTube video that gives me like a, a very modern um, tour of that area in which maybe he might have lived, but basically of the town of Wagner, South Carolina. I also include a link to a map here. And here I'm including um, a death certificate from when his son passed away. So I've already published this spreadsheet to the web. All right, so I'll go back to timeline.js and just replace that link that I had set up with the example spreadsheet. So I'll delete this and add in mine for my spreadsheet. All right. And now I can make changes to the settings and things like that if I want. So I'll just choose a different font just for the heck of it. And everything else looks okay. And now what I can do is do preview. So I'll do preview in a new window just to see what it looks like. All right, so this is where the stuff starts to get good because you can start visualizing um, everything that you've kind of compiled together and make this more of an interesting, more of an interesting interactive history as opposed to, oh, this is just some facts on a piece of paper. So the first item is the birth of my great, great grandfather. I've included the 1900 federal census because this is really the first time where I got a better understanding of what year and what month he was born in. And it also includes additional members of his family and that household. If I go to the right, I have the birth of his wife. Unfortunately, in this timeline, I don't have any images of any individuals because um, I haven't found any yet, but this would be a great opportunity to, if you did have pictures of ancestors or things like that, you could include them in this timeline. Now I can also zoom out of the timeline if I want to, to have a better understanding of what's going on. I can zoom in. 
And I can also just reset it back to the beginning if I want to go back. You can also click with your left mouse key and just drag the timeline over to. If I click on this one, here's another image. This one's a World War I draft registration card of this individual. Here I have a video of someone showing what Wagner, South Carolina looks like in today's time. So I've embedded that here. And people can just watch the video and see what it's like there since of course we can't really travel right now. And then here I have a map. And then here's a death certificate. So as you can see this timeline could be really great for um, showing an overall perspective of an individual's life and maybe making it more interesting to people who are not, of course, in the weeds, in the records like you are. So even after you've made your spreadsheet publicly available for Timeline.js and you've put the URL to the spreadsheet in Timeline.js and viewed the timeline, you can still make changes to it. All you have to do is go to the spreadsheet that you were using and just modify it. So for example, I know this individual had a twin. Maybe I want to put in that twin's birth as well. I would just insert another row, put whatever that date is. As you'll notice, I'm not using any end periods just because I've chosen very finite dates. But if I were to include, say, a historical event like World War I or World War II or something like that, I would put my um, starting date here and then my ending date here. So I'm going to continue with this event. And then I'm just not going to include a media image. Now I don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is go back to where my timeline is and refresh it. And now if I zoom out on my timeline so I can find that event, I see Birdie Lawrence is here and she has a twin to Clifford Lawrence. So this was an event I already had in here. And then this is the one that I just added. So it's very, very quick to get your updates as well. So even if you're sharing this link with others, um, they will also get those updates very quickly. Now I did mention that Timeline.js does have a WordPress plugin. So I just want to show you guys uh, what that plugin uh, looks like. So you can just go to Google and type in Timeline.js WordPress plugin and it will be this one here. And so it allows you to use the same functionality um, as on the website, just makes it easier for you if you have a WordPress website. So this is what you would want to use um, for that purpose. All right, that's all I've got for you guys. If you like what you saw, definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel, Olivia Peacock, for more Gen Tech episodes. And definitely like, comment, let me know if you have questions or anything like that. I just want to know what you guys think. And that's it. Until next time.